Get ready, Aurora Hunters. The sky is about to light up again. The sun just sent another X flare our way, and we might get a severe G4 storm tonight. The current forecast has a PKP index of more than 8 from the hours of 2100 to 0600 UTC, or about 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. Eastern Time. And this is after the sun let out a massive X flare as seen here. We can see Kama Suchinshan Atlas flying right by as it happens. Be careful, dude. It is massive, and according to the National Weather Service briefing on the storm earlier, the circular pattern that we see here indicates that it has an Earth-directed component. It's coming at us at more than 2.5 million miles an hour, or about 4 million kilometers an hour. It's much faster than the CME that hit us back in May, which could indicate that this storm will be much shorter. And there's no way to know what the structure of the CME is actually like until it gets really close to us, about 1 million miles or 1.6 million kilometers, which is less than half an hour before it hits us. There are many factors that can determine whether or not we see auroras here on Earth. And two of the more important ones has to do with the Earth's magnetic field itself. And the two values we care about are the BT and the BZ values. Both values can be found on top of spaceweather.gov, and both values are not predictable as far as I know. So we have to look at the readings as they come in. BT is the strength of the magnetic field measured in nanotesla. And the higher the number, the higher the chances we have of seeing auroras here on Earth because we know that there will be a fight between the Earth's magnetic field and the CME that hits us. But what's probably even more important for auroras is the BZ value. The BZ value is the north-south orientation of the Earth's magnetic field on the globe's z-axis. A lower value indicates that the magnetic field lines are more south-facing, and the higher into the negatives that we go, the higher chances we have of seeing the aurora at lower latitudes. For example, the aurora that hit us in May, I believe the highest BZ value that we saw was negative 50. And the one that hit us in early October just a few days ago, I believe the highest we saw was negative 15. Just to give you an idea of what you can expect. And yes, this is happening just a few days after the Earth was hit with another CME where we saw auroras where the KP index peaked at 7.33. I unfortunately had clouds, so I couldn't do any imaging, but I saw all of the beautiful photos that were posted on social media. And a special thanks to everyone who posted on the Nastronomy Discord server because I loved seeing those. The last storm we saw was supposed to hit us on Saturday night when it was super clear, but there was a delay and we didn't see any activity in the atmosphere until Sunday night when it peaked and some more activity on Monday night. So if a delay happens again, it won't be the first time that I get hurt. So the lesson is don't get too excited about the forecast. You can always check spaceweather.gov for the current values as well as the current forecast and see what is predicted. You can easily capture Aurora with your phone, but if you want an idea of how to capture with a camera, check out the video I did back in May after the G5 storm where I show you my equipment, my capture settings, and how I post-processed all of my images. And now for some potentially sad news about Comet C2024-S1 Atlas. I first talked about it less than a week ago, saying that this comet has the potential to be really bright, brighter than Venus. But now it looks like the comet may be coming to an end. Rest in pieces comet that I probably wouldn't have been able to see from the Northern Hemisphere anyway, but I didn't want you to go out this way. It was discovered on September 27th, and it was expected to give Venus a run for its money in terms of brightness. It was a sun grazer comet from the Kreutz family, which was a much bigger comet that broke up into pieces a long time ago. Unfortunately, observations of the comet on October 8th, as reported on the astronomer's telegram, found that there was a lack of condensation around the nucleus, and it appeared longer and fainter than we expected. And that suggests that the comet may have started to disintegrate. Comparing the comet's nucleus, as seen in pictures taken October 3rd versus October 8th, we can see that the nucleus looks longer and not like it's in one piece anymore. But there's still a chance that we might still get some kind of a show as the comet reaches perihelion on October 28th. Maybe the tail will start to glow brighter because there's just more of the comet's ice everywhere in space now. Or maybe it's just messing with us and all those pieces that disintegrated will come back together and form a new comet. Who knows? But again, the lesson in this video is don't get too excited about anything. Unless it's about Kama Suchinshan Atlas because it is coming around the sun now and it'll be visible in the evening sky after sunset. And as we go later into October and into early November, the comet will go higher and higher in the sky and it'll max out at about 30 degrees above the horizon, which is plenty high. Of course, the longer you wait, the dimmer the comet will get and the farther it will be and eventually we won't be able to see it anymore. And if you miss it, don't worry, it'll come back around and you'll get your chance to see it again in 80,000 years.